In today's presentation, I'll be going over stem cells and MMPs in cardiovascular disease. But first, a short introduction about myself. My name is Hans Beck, and I'm a rising 10th grader at the Harker School in the Bay Area. In terms of my extracurricular activities, I am a school HOSA and medical club officer. I've also played the violin for nine years, and I enjoy competing in archery competitions. I'm also a second degree black belt in Taekwondo. Moving on to my outline. First, I'll discuss cardiovascular disease along with some background information surrounding my project. I'll discuss its prevalence, risk factors, and the latest advancements in treatment and prevention. As a side note, I'll be referring to cardiovascular disease as CVD from here on out. Second, stem cells. I'll talk about the potential of stem cells in regenerative medicine and the ethical considerations involved. I'll also look at the role of MMPs in tissue remodeling and their impact on diseases like CVD. Finally, I'll talk about future research directions and innovative treatments in these areas. But first, cardiovascular disease. According to the World Health Organization, CVD is the world's leading cause of death, claiming an estimated 17.9 million lives each year. Current treatments include 1. Coronary angioplasties, 2. Coronary artery bypass grafts, and 3. Heart transplants. Each of these treatments carries risks and limitations. Coronary angioplasties involve inserting a small balloon-like tube called a catheter into the blood vessel to unclog it. This can lead to bleeding or bruising. A coronary artery bypass graft redirects blood around clogged arteries using a graft from another part of the body, but it carries risks like infection and kidney failure. Heart transplants, the most invasive option, involve implanting a donor heart and poses severe risks such as infection and blood clots, which can lead to heart attacks or strokes. Unfortunately, there is no cure for CVD. However, emerging treatments do offer hope. Stem cell therapy, for instance, has shown promise in regenerating damaged heart tissues. Stem cells can differentiate into new heart muscle cells and blood vessels, potentially replacing damaged tissues. According to the Becker's Hospital Review, stem cell treatment can reduce heart attacks and strokes by 58%, with an even higher reduction rate of 75% in patients with high inflammation. Moving on to stem cells. Stem cells are one of the most well-studied topics in medicine. So you might be wondering, what is a stem cell? Well, they're undifferentiated cells with the potential to become various cell types in the body. Now, let's talk about the types. We have pluripotent stem cells, like embryonic stem cells, and adult stem cells, such as mesenchymal stem cells. One fascinating type of pluripotent stem cell is the induced pluripotent stem cell, or iPSC. IPSCs are reprogrammed somatic cells, like skin or blood cells, reverted to an embryonic state using transcription factors. This method sidesteps ethical issues, as embryonic stem cells can only be obtained by the destruction of a human embryo. IPSCs offer a promising future in stem cell therapy, potentially overcoming issues like engraftment rejection, as most IPSCs are from your own body. Now, onto matrix metalloproteinases, or MMPs. MMPs are critical for tissue remodeling. Discovered in 1962 by scientists Gross and Lapierre, these zinc-dependent enzymes play vital roles in physiological and pathological processes. In my presentation, I'll focus on three MMPs, MMP9, 14, and 16. MMP9 is involved in inflammation and fibrosis in CBD. MMP14 aids in embryonic tissue formation and heart repair post-myocardial infarction and MMP-16 also plays crucial roles in tissue remodeling. MMPs in stem cell therapy. MMPs significantly enhance stem cell therapy by influencing stem cell differentiation. MMPs can modify the extracellular matrix and alter signaling pathways, promoting the differentiation of stem cells into cardiomyocytes. By combining MMPs with iPSCs, we can speed up the differentiation process, making stem cell therapy far more efficient. Now, let's move on to the specifics. MMP9. MMP9 plays a critical role in CVD. Deficiency in MMP9 has been linked to ventricular arrhythmias, which is the abnormal heart rate. Research in mice shows that MMP9 deficiency can actually prevent calcium ion leakage, reducing arrhythmias. However, MMP9 also influences neovascularization, cardiac fibrosis, and high blood pressure. Promising therapeutic target. Due to MMP9's pleiotropic effects, targeting RYR2, PKA, CX43, and calcium ion leakages offers promising avenues beyond MMPs in cardiovascular therapy. 
Understanding these targets can mitigate over-proliferation risks and improve stem cell differentiation precision. Specifically, MMP14 plays a crucial role in facilitating tissue remodeling by cleaving collagen, which aids in cardiac repair. On the other hand, MMP16 influences extracellular matrix dynamics, regulating interactions critical for maintaining tissue structure in the heart. Promising Therapeutic Targets Part 2 Another promising target is engrafting MMP9 deficient cardiomyocytes directly into the heart, as we know that this may help prevent arrhythmia. As shown in the diagram, there are a variety of ways of doing this. As seen in all parts, we can take patient fibroblasts and reprogram them into iPSC. In part A, we take these iPSCs and differentiate them into cardiac progenitor cells ready for engraftment. In part B, we can do the same thing, but instead use the help of MMPs to alter and increase the proliferation rates of the progenitor cells. Finally, in part C, we can further differentiate the cardiac progenitor cells with MMPs into cardiac stem cells. This extra step proves to be greatly beneficial as it reduces the risks of misdifferentiation. Now, let's talk about some unanswered questions in the future. Even though stem cells have been a hot topic in modern medicine, there are still unanswered questions for scientists to discover. As seen in the figure below, using a sequencer, scientists can extract the cardiomyocytes and perform sequencing and omic studies. With omic studies, we can analyze the protein regulation found in the cells, which can ultimately tell us how the stem cells are being impacted by the MMPs. In the future, scientists hope to find a clear connection between MMPs and stem cells so that they can fully harness the power of both and potentially create a cure for CVD. In conclusion, iPSCs hold tremendous promise for treating CVD and beyond. The future looks promising as we advance in understanding and mitigating these obstacles. Obviously, there will be many challenges in the future, including the issue of permanent engraftment and tissue rejection. But hopefully, some of my proposed solutions can help counter those issues. Moreover, MMPs like MMP9, 14, and 16 all present exciting therapeutic targets, influencing stem cell differentiation and tissue regeneration. Now, here are some of my references. I'd also like to give a huge thank you to the Global Health Leaders Conference and John Hopkins for providing this truly amazing opportunity for me to share some of my thoughts on proposals and this field of global health. I'd also like to thank you guys for listening to my presentation. Thank you. Here are a couple links to contact me. My email is hansbeck100 at gmail.com with my LinkedIn below. Thanks for listening.